12. A couple of years ago, I, along with a cousin of mine, I started working on a research to give the blind a new vision. So we, we worked on the project and finally ended up with a long sorted research paper. What was next? How can a high schooler in India connect his ideas to the world? And of course, you have not seen a college professor working with a high schooler. But when I mailed my synopsis to the assistant department of IIT Delhi, I got a prompt response. They called me to the labs, guided me with my project, we discussed on the shortcomings, and I finally moved on to get my paper published in an international journal. So what is it that I am doing? We all here possess the world's greatest power, the power of sight. Imagine if I blindfold you for one day and ask you to do the very mundane things such as just putting your toothpaste on a toothbrush, you will realize how difficult it is for you to do things without being able to see them. Now, imagine the lives of blind people who have to do a lot more than just the toothpaste. In fact, they have to carry out all the cores of their lives without being able to see them and they are actually dependent on either devices or people itself. According to the World Health Organization, 285 million people are visually impaired. And to give this number a perspective, this is equal to the entire population of Japan and Russia combined. So what are the problems that these blind people are facing? So I categorize these problems into two main categories. The first one is short distance obstacle tackling. So when a person, blind person, gets on the road, what is the first problem that, is fa that he faces? It is of course that he has to first detect the obstacles and objects that come on his way, then find a solution to tackle them. He does not want to get hurt. Now you all must be thinking that there's already a plethora of devices such as the white cane that the blind people use, or the other electronic travel aids such as ultrasonic belts. But but what I'm here to give an answer to is something that is not solved by either the, blind, uh, the white cane or the electronic travel aid. The problem of long distance navigation. Now what is long distance navigation? When a blind person gets on the road and he walks in a certain path, he tends to deviate from his intended path to travel. Which is that suppose he wants to uh, walk, uh, walk in a straight foot path, he will tend to deviate and move away from the footpath, which can actually be dangerous to him. In fact, this problem is so big that sometimes when a blind person wants to cross a street, he actually ends up making a semicircle and coming back on the same side of the street and thinking that he has crossed the street. So how can we help a person maintain his trajectory and stay on the gate that he wants to travel to? So you all must be thinking, why not just use a GPS device that can use an audio output to guide the person to move left, right, or move in a certain direction? But today, in countries like India, the GPS, the global positioning system, has an error of approximately 15 to 20 meters. Well, this error can be ignored when we are, uh, we are traveling in cars or vehicles, but when we are on foot, where each step actually matters a lot, these 15 to 20 meters can make a lot of difference. Moreover, we all know that when a blind person loses his one sense, his other senses, such as his hearing senses, become very strong. So actually using an audio output to guide the person will hinder his hearing senses, which are actually helping him navigate the environment in a more natural way. So that is not a smart approach. So what new do I have? How did I solve this problem and how, how did I approach this problem? So I first thought, how does a normal person walking on road manage and control his trajectory? How, why does not he deviate here and there? So of course, the answer is that he has vision, he can see things. But after what he sees, what is the system in a body that controls the balance of a body? So it is the vestibular system, which is the sensory system of a body, which controls the spatial orientation and the posture of a body. While researching the vestibular system, I came across this very interesting phenomenon of galvanic vestibular stimulation. 
So as some of you might know about it, galvanic vestibular stimulation includes applying electrodes behind the ear on the mastoid process right above the vestibular system and simultaneously ask a person to walk. So we have electrodes above the vestibular system. We are applying very minute currents through it. And when we simultaneously ask the person to walk, we see that the person automatically deviates towards the direction of the anode. So he's actually changed. We are actually changing his trajectory in a sub, at a subconscious level. So I thought of applying this galvanic vestibular stimulation to create a new device which can actually help the problem of long distance navigation. So what I did was, we, we, in the hypothetical paper, we hooked up a PID controller with the GVS system. Now the detectors will detect whether a person is getting off the track and see the error that has been created. Now this message will be sent to the vestibular, galvanic vestibular system, which will, in, re, in response, send a current stimulus to the vestibular system and get the person back on his track. Yes, this sounds like a miracle, but it is possible. And this is the idea I want to share. Moreover, in the end, I would like to conclude by citing a certain anecdote from my personal life. When I ended with my research, I showed my research to my school teachers and other people. But I was surprised to know that not everybody was ready to help me, not, not only because of their will, but also because of the lack of sophisticated lab materials. I am a person who does not have any connections or resources with any IIT or college professor. But if you really have the power and, the, and if you believe that your research or your project or your idea has the skill and if you believe in sharing it with others, people will definitely notice you. In the end, I would like to conclude by quoting Laurie Notaro, if you really believe in what you're doing, work hard, take nothing personally and if, if something blocks one route, find another. Never give up. Thank you.